Welcome to Brief Crypto. We review the talk and action around crypto and sum it up. Today is Friday, February 10th, and today's video is for entertainment only. Looking at the markets on CryptoBubbles.com. Top 100 tokens were first looking at the month. It's been a good month so far for crypto, but it is a red day, also a red week. So still a few green bubbles for the week and still a few green bubbles for the day. But overall, a red day. Frax down 11.9, Lido down 8, Solana down 3.1, Near Protocol down 2.7, Curve down 4, Chainlink down 3.8, ApeCoin down 3.2, Tuncoin down 4.5, some of the bigger green bubbles. Loop Rings up 13.5%, Immutable X up 8.1 for the day, Mina is up 11.4 for the day. Hedera is up 11.2, Shiba's up 3.8, The Sandbox up 1.7, The Graph up 9.7, Decentraland Mana up 3. So there are some green bubbles, but Crypto Bubbles is showing the day as red. They are showing that in the last hour we have turned green, mostly green bubbles for the hour, but a red day. Looking at Bitcoin, we're going to continue looking at the big events. And so Bitcoin one week chart. Uh, the big question has been, are we in an extended uh, winter? A lot of people have been talking about the, the Wall Street cheat sheet that indicates that we have another big drop uh, before the low, or at least they're pointing to a point in, the, uh, in that chart where we'd have a, a, a deeper low than we currently have in the Bitcoin halving cycle. But we are 10 weeks past the average. The average is 55 weeks, current lows at 54 weeks. And we're in the 65th week. So just looking at the Bitcoin halving cycles and if the patterns continue as they have in the past, we would expect that the crypto winter is over and we are in the summer. Of course, the big thing that's different this time is the markets heading down and uh, the inflation, the Fed raising the federal funds rate and all of all of the pain that that is causing. But uh we are 10 weeks past the average for the Bitcoin having cycles. And so right now we're looking to whether we're going to do a retrace. We've been talking about we had a big pump over the last several weeks. One, two, three, four weekly candles that are green that pumped us right up. One candle up 22% back on January 9th, the, candle, uh, the weekly candle of January 9th. So we had a big move. We were expecting that we'd get a retrace. And so now it's a matter of are we going to retra retrace back to this 50-day or 200-day simple moving average, which are roughly at the same point as the 50-day has crossed above the 200, creating the golden cross? Or are we going to come down lower than that? And so we're going to be looking for whether we make a higher low or a lower low. So the, uh, the st stochastic RSI on the weekly chart is showing in the overbought area. As you can see here, we're above 85 still for the stochastic RSI. So looking at Bitcoin uh, chart, weekly chart, uh, in a much more detailed up close. So we're going to be looking at some of these Fibonacci levels for the retrace. And the 0.5 is following, falling pretty much right where the 50 and 200 day simple moving average is hitting as well, right around 20,000 common place to retrace so we're doing it from this swing low to this swing high common area to retrace is the fibonacci golden pocket between 0.618 and 0.65 which puts us right in the 19,000 range 18.7 to 19,000 and it wouldn't be uncommon to retrace even back to the 0.786 fibonacci level would get us closer down to 17,000 but that would still be a higher low even if we got down to the 0.786 so we're going to be watching very closely this we did get a higher high and so if we do get a higher low then that is going to be a good indicator that we're heading back up for bitcoin ethereum uh, same kind of analogy the uh, we have a close we did close or we're looking to whether we close above the trend line and we get out of this range we've been in a range for Ethereum between 1,000 and 2,000 for quite a while. This is a weekly chart. So for 36 weeks, we've been in this range between 1,000 and 2,000. So we're going to be looking for whether we break and close in a weekly candle above this trend line, this downtrending uh, resistance line. And then the next step would be getting out of this range bound 
uh, between 1,000 and 2,000 for Ethereum that we've been in for some time. But right now we're retracing and again looking for wh whether we retrace back to the 0.5 the, or the golden pocket or 0.786, all of which would give us a higher low for Ethereum. Also the 200 simple moving average and the 50 day or 50, yeah, 50 day simple moving average. Uh, that's right in the area of the 0.5 Fibonacci from this swing low to this swing high. So uh, we have the golden cross that's occurred on Ethereum as well. And we are showing as overbought for Ethereum on the stochastic RSI on the one week chart on tradingview.com. Of course, in the last cycle for Ethereum, uh, last Bitcoin having cycle, having cycle two, we came down 90%. If we came down 90% in this cycle, we'd be down at 600. But we're well past the duration for the cycle. And so we would expect that this is the low back here down around um, 800, 850, somewhere in that area. Well, it's uh, 884, 884 for the low for Ethereum and the Bitcoin having uh, three cycle. Looking at Ethereum on the daily chart, computer's running a little slow today. Uh, we have had three days of red candles. The one we're in right now is down 0.89%. So holding up pretty well with the news related to Kraken about staking, staking that we talked about yesterday. And so that's likely what has brought down the market the last couple of days. Although we were, we were due for uh, a correction anyway, retracing some of these big gains that we've made recently. It would only be normal that we come down and retrace to some level and uh, like we talked about earlier in the on the daily for ethereum on the stochastic rsi it's actually showing as oversold so looking at the nasdaq because we're still highly correlated especially with the nasdaq but with all of the u.s markets um, they're following a similar pattern similar pattern we got a higher low and a higher high we did break through this long uh, down trend uh, resistance line uh, back on oh the week of where is that week of January 23rd? We broke through and closed on the candle also above the 200 day simple moving average. So we're close to the golden cross for the NASDAQ. And currently on the one week, the stochastic R RSI is showing us overbought, which we would expect. We've been in this big run for the NASDAQ. And so we would expect that it would retrace as well back to maybe one of these Fibonacci levels, the 0.5 or the golden pocket or the 786, all of which would still give us a higher low if we came even down to those levels. Another, some other big areas, a lot of stuff going on here. 50 day, 200 day, this downtrending, long-term downtrending resistance line, the golden pocket are all hitting right in this 12,000 area for the NASDAQ. Looking at the one day, and of course the next big event is the CPI numbers, or the uh, consumer price index number that we're gonna get on February 14th. We've been in a downtrend on that number since back on the number we got on July, which was for June of 9.1. So we've been going down since then, 9.1, 8.5, 8.3, 8.2, 7.7, 7.1 and 6.5. Expect it's right around 6.5. So if we get anything lower than that and continue the downtrend, that is going to be positive likely for the markets. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Looking at the total cryptocurrency market cap, similar kind of thing. We came up, we've really pumped up of late, and this Kraken news has basically dropped about 60, 65,000 out of the total market. But if we retrace, even if we re retrace clear back to this 786 Fibonacci, which is from this swing low to this swing high that we're running at, so actually, well, a little different there, right there, then um, from this swing low to this swing high, that 0.5 is right around the 200 day. Golden Pockets just under the 50 day, so uh, wouldn't be surprising to have a retrace back to those points. And we did break above the downtrending, long-term downtrending resistance line back on January 9th, the week of January 9th. And so there's a lot of stuff coming together right in this circle. 0.5 Fibonacci, the Golden Pocket, this long-term downtrending resistance line that could become support, the 200 day, the 50 day, the golden cross, so a lot happening in that circle for the total cryptocurrency market cap. Looking at total three, which is a total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, 
uh, similar kind of thing. We're expecting a retrace, and again, a lot happening in that circle. Uh, 0.5, the golden pocket, this long, this downtrending resistance line, which we have not closed above yet. So we still are looking for whether we're going to get a higher high or higher low. It's looking like we're going to have, or excuse me, a, low, a higher high or a lower high. Looks like we're going to end up with a lower high on this, but we'll see how this candle, this weekly candle closes in two days, four hours. But it's sitting right at the 200-day simple moving average, and the golden cross is imminent on total three. So also, once it starts moving up again, we'll be watching this VPVR, the volume profile visible range cliff coming off there, and that's related to very little support and resistance structure back in this quick drop that we had earlier back from April down to May, mid-May for total three. In news related to crypto, SEC staking crackdown could be positive for decentralized Ethereum, according to this article on CryptoPotato.com, crypto markets are reeling today following the latest enforcement action from the U.S. SEC. However, there could be a silver lining for Ethereum and crypto staking. According to this article, investors are not going to stop staking or buying Ethereum because ill-informed U.S. regulators want to ban it. The net result will be a crypto exodus from America to friendlier jurisdictions. Crypto markets have reacted badly to the latest regulatory crackdown. Total market cap has tanked 5.3% over the past 24 hours with 60 billion leaving the space. And we saw that in this total right here that went from 945. This one weekly candle goes from 954 billion to 1.05 trillion. It's currently off the lows at 969 billion for the total cryptocurrency market cap. And further news related to crypto on CryptoNewsFlash.com, crypto wells sell off Bitcoin and Ethereum tokens in February 2023. Here's why they're probably buying TMS Network, ticker symbol TMS, tokens during its pre-sale. The wells show where the smart money goes, according to this article, and the consumer investor will do well to follow the wells, which is why consumer investors should consider following the wells and buying TMS Network. So massive profits are possible, and one way the investor can ensure the best chance of sharing in these gigantic profits is by investing early. This opportunity lies in the soon-to-be-launched TMS Network Exchange. The TMS Network Exchange is a new first-of-its-kind exchange that offers traders crypto and other investment vehicles such as CFDs, Forex, and even stocks. What sets TMS apart is the first it's the first ever decentralized exchange decentralization is one of the factors which makes crypto so attractive to both investors and users of crypto and now tms network brings the decentralized nature of crypto to an exchange platform those who own tms network tokens also own the exchange users on the exchange can use tms tokens to trade any asset across the exchange in an easy to use an intuitive environment which sets the, sets the stage for a revolution of on-chain trading. It's currently in phase one of its pre-sale, and there are a limited number of to tokens, according to this article on CryptoNewsFlash.com. You can learn more about TMS Network on TMSNetwork.io. Last news, news article on YouToday.com. Cardano ranks biggest staking network after Ethereum. According to Staking Rewards, Cardano ranks as the second largest proof-of-stake network after Ethereum with a staking market cap of $9.22 billion. Ethereum, on the other hand, has a staking market cap of $26.95 billion. Cardano has a higher staking ratio of 71.86, while Ethereum has one of 14.31, so a big Big difference in the staking ratio with almost 72% of Cardano staked. So we're going to continue looking at this Bitcoin chart that looks at the boxes and that we're likely in this summer according to the Bitcoin having cycles, um, which have been very consistent in the past. Not to say that they're going to continue because past performance is no guarantee of future return. But currently things are right on track with, past, with the past uh, in having one. Bitcoin went down 87% in 58 weeks and having two de down 84% in 52 weeks, so 3% less. And having three in 54 weeks, it went down 78%. So that's another six 
or 7884, 6% down, 6% difference between two and three. So it's trending right as one would expect. And, and as far as the durations, I mean, they're so close, 58, 52, and 54. And then these summers have been right on, right on with 152 weeks for having two, 152 weeks for having three. And if we get 152 weeks of summer for having four, coming into the having four event in, that's expected in March of 2024, then we'd expect a peak somewhere, somewhere up around 250 to 500,000 for Bitcoin in November, December of 2025. And so, the, of course, the big event that's going to uh, pr have a big impact on that is on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And that's this CPI number like we talked about before. The other thing we're going to be watching for in the Fed minutes is, is if they continue to talk about a reverse repo, repo rate of 4.5% as that could send a lot of money out of the markets. Uh, the CBBI, we still believe we're in this valley of great opportunity for buying for the Bitcoin having three cycle like we saw back in in having uh, three, having two, and having one. So we're at the bottom in this coming from the post-peak low of having three going into the having four cycle. We believe we're in this valley of great opportunity. Again, the CBBI, which you can learn, learn more about on callandtalkscrypto.com slash CBBI is at 14 right now, and that's this blue line. And so it has been really a good predictor, especially in uh, one and two for calling the peak in Bitcoin. Not as good in having three, and so it's been a little bit off in having three, but we'll see right now the bottoms for the CBBI value and the bottoms for Bitcoin are looking uh, pretty similar to what we're in now right here. So we're going to continue to watch that, the Bitcoin bull run index. Thank you for joining today's Brief Crypto. If you like today's video, please follow us. Today's video is for entertainment only. We are not financial advisors. You should always do your own investment research.